Yeah, so this is called the D-pad. Wow, so cool, so innovative, so original. You are the best, NES. I know, I know. And these are called buttons, as in more than one. Hey guys, how's it going? Ugh, here comes that weird kid again. Wow, Nintendo, your new controller looks great. But have you ever thought about making one for your feet? Like my joy board? As if, what are you thinking? Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'll be exploring one of the worst consoles that was ever invented. And it even managed to bankrupt an entire company. But before that, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon as we kick off Generation 5. Okay guys, so on this channel, we tend to mostly cover the more successful consoles of the past. But what about the oddities, the weirdo systems that did not break through? Sometimes, it's not hard to see why a console failed. The 32-bit Commodore Amiga 32. I mean guys, just look at this thing. And where are those? I am so confused right now. But aside from the hideous controller, let's not judge a book by its cover and let's go over the history of the Amiga 32. And hopefully, it can redeem itself. It's okay. It's okay, little buddy, I'm here for you. This needs to stop, now. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. For those of you who didn't know, Commodore was once the most popular name in the home computing industry. And throughout the 80s, it held its own against industry giants with the VIC-20, the Commodore 64, and the Amiga line of computers. But as the rise of home consoles emerged and the declining sales of the company, Commodore decided to take a stab at producing their very own home console. This was twice as fast, twice as powerful as anything I'd ever thought possible. Which was set to be released in the US early 1994. You know guys, another famous company comes to mind that took a stab at the gaming market as well. If you guys know what I'm talking about, leave it down in the comments below. But first, here's a hint. A game a day keeps the doctor away. Commodore, get this guys, owed $10 million in back owned patent royalties and wasn't allowed to release it until they paid it off. You guys think that's bad? Just hang tight, cause it gets a lot worse. The system was discontinued only after eight months after being released, which ultimately bankrupted the company, ruining one of the biggest computer companies of all time in less than one year. You know what? In fact, breaking into any market is not an easy task. For example, Google Stadia was a gaming platform that promised a lot, but couldn't deliver. Even having Google as a backer does not guarantee direct success. The truth is that currently, the gaming market has become so far and just keeps getting better and better. So for game developers, coming up with new ideas is no longer child's play. All right, let's just say it did release in the US. The original retail price of the console was set at $400. <sighs> Don't forget, that was in 1993. And the price of that today will be roughly around $700. If I'm gonna spend that type of money, it better file my taxes, do my chores, mow my lawn, and cook me dinner every single night for me to even consider it. You could buy two Xbox Ones and a month's supplies of toaster pastries for that price. <sighs> the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis cost half of that. So really, who was your target market? The system launched with two very good games at its packing titles. That's right guys, two games. How am I gonna find the time to play all that? Digital Illusions Pinball Fantasy and Ocean Software Sleepwalker. However, both of these games were previous Mega releases coming out in 1992 and earlier in 1993. The Mega CD32 
did not launch with any new material, and very few games were ever developed for it exclusively. So, what was the point of releasing these games when it could just been developed for the predecessor? You know what? This kind of reminds me of the current issue we have with EA's FIFA. Every year is the same game with just a little different updates. I can have a whole video to rant about this, but to cut it short, it boils down to greedy companies. Me money! Me beautiful money! As you can imagine, it was a gigantic flop. Except for in Europe during the Christmas of 1993 when it briefly outsold the Sega Mega CD. Son, you've been a really good boy this year. Christmas is right around the corner. What would you want? You can have anything, and I mean anything. Oh, geez, Willikers, Daddy. I would love that. I know exactly what I want. I want the Amiga CD32. Are you sure, son? Because I read in the paper that the Amiga got pretty bad reviews. Why don't I give you one of those Nintendos or Segas? No, Daddy. I don't want the amazing Nintendo or Sega. I want the Amiga CD32. Interesting. Ultimately, it was too expensive to produce, and unfortunately, these European sales were not able to save the company. And as in April of 1994, Commodore International declared bankruptcy, causing the CD32 to be canceled mere months after its launch. RIP Commodore, gone, forgotten, yeah. The Amiga CD32 claimed to be the very first 32-bit video game console ever released to the market, which was actually false since the FM Towns Marty had been previously released in Japan seven months earlier. Click on the top right corner to check out that video. The Amiga CD32 boasted a dual-speed CD-ROM drive, Augie 8 chipset, lots of expansion options, and even a few surprises. The CD32 could run photo CDs, video CDs if you have the FMV cartridge, CD TV software, music CDs, and karaoke CDs. Standing at 2.1 inches in height, 12.3 inches in length, and 8.4 inches in width, this is a pretty standard sized console. But enough talk, let's see how bad this system allegedly is. Alright guys, we're kicking off the Amiga CD with the game Pang. I thought it was called Pong at first, but I guess it's spelled the A. Um, okay, a little demo. That's cool, you just shoot a little wire bulb. Oh, you can double shoot. And I guess you don't want the balls to touch you. I see. The big ball splits into smaller ones, you gotta get them. And there's a time limit as well. Oh, I get nice little power-ups. I wonder what this gun does. Oh, come on. Mmm! I almost got the gun. Yeah, this is not easy. I think the trick is to not hit the big ball and break him up. Just take the smaller out first. Mm. Yeah, the controls are actually extremely fluid on this Amiga CD controller. It's very simplistic. Yes, stage four. 15 minutes later. All right guys, as you can tell, I made it significantly further in the game. It, this took me a while. It was a grind. It, as you can tell, it got a lot harder, but uh, your boy is actually doing good. I'm surprised. Yeah, extremely hard. Oh, give me that. Yeah, this gun and the time is the best power-ups. So whenever you get that time, you want when you freeze everything, you want to just go ham. Yeah, this is not easy. Approximately 10 hours later. There's so many green balls everywhere. Just slapping me in my face. These freaking green balls. Balls in my face. I don't like balls in my face, especially when they're green. And these crabs, balls and crabs. <laughs> so, that's what I've been dealing with, guys, for the past three hours. Who are the sick sickos who created this game? <clears throat> Again, I died. Come on, come on! <clears throat> oh my god, I... I can't, I can't. I can't do this right now. <clears throat> I will finish this game, no matter how long it takes me. Because I am a winner, not a loser. And these green balls have nothing on me. Mm. Come on. 
thousands of tears later. Oh, just two more balls. Yes, level cleared. Oh, wait. I'm sure is that it? Let's go. I beat it. Wow. Oh, my God. I have not been this stoked for so long. Yes. Let's go. Oh my god, I don't even know how long I spent playing this. Enjoying the sunset of northern, excuse me, southern Pacific. I will enjoy it! If that doesn't earn me a sub, I don't know what does, guys. Like the video, leave me a comment, and I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need to go eat or something. I haven't eaten for hours. Alright guys, next up we got Stardust. I hope this game is not as hard as the last one, because... I am beat. Oh, this is just like a knockoff of asteroids. Yeah, this is like asteroids, but a little bit better graphics. Um, the colors are nice. I like the background. Controls are, you know, I always found asteroid control controls to be really buggy because you know you gotta go forward, you gotta turn around. It's not like dynamic, but. These type of games, these are the type of controls. You know how I beat Asteroids in the previous gameplay is I just pretty much stood still and not try to move too much because the thrusters always messes you up and because you glide too much. And look how many rocks are there already. This is the first level, level two. Why is it so hard? Um, overall, guys. Don't really recommend this game at all. Play Asteroids, play the original. As you can tell, this game is just, ah, it's pretty bad. So yeah, play the original. Let this one just chill. Forget about this game. I'm not wasting my time playing this game. I'm done. All right, guys, next up we got Cannon Fodder. Yeah, I thought it was pronounced Fodler, but there's no L. It's just Cannon Fodder. Fodder. <laughs> it's weird to say. Oh, it looks like I have a little mouse. It's like a point and shoot uh, war game based in the Vietnam jungle. Yeah, it's actually pretty fun. I like how they die when you shoot them. Um, very unique. That I'm surprised they use like the mouse configuration. Oh, here's here's some enemies. Oh yeah, super satisfying killing the bad guys. Um, this game is really growing on me. It's pretty fun to be honest. Destroy their HQ. All right, guys. As you can tell, <clears throat> I progressed pretty far. I'm a rank lieutenant, I think, <clears throat> or maybe even general by now. I love the guys in my squad's name. Listen to this guy's name. I got Jason, I got Roy, and I got Pee Wee. Pee Wee's been a champ. He's been killing it for me. Without Pee Wee, I don't know how I could survive this far. Uh, comment down below if you ever watched Pee, -Pee, Pee Wee Herman. Oh, that was my favorite shows movie back in the day it's pretty easy you just gotta get a, a feel for the controls where are these guys whoa uh, bazookas this is new jesus where did these guys come from uh, unbelievable i'm about to get wrecked by this bazooka guy oh oh <laughs> yeah hell off all right guys that's a wrap for this gameplay um Pretty fun, I recommend it. Give it a try. All right, guys, all jokes aside, you know I tend to give each and every console the benefit of the doubt, but the Amiga CD, I just could not muster up any positive feedback. I think the Amiga CD really was the nail in the coffin for Commodore. What a way to go out. If you enjoy this content, guys, make sure to hit the like button. That really helps out the channel. And please subscribe to help me reach my goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.